Today, we're taking a look at the EPOS SDW Impact 5064 Binaural Deck System. Clearly, we're going to be unboxing that decked headset, the base system, taking a look at what's included in the box, going over its physical components. We'll do a little look and feel test. We'll go over how to connect this to your computer and manage it with EPOS Connect. We'll demo how far that long, up to 590 feet decked range can get us. We're not gonna go that far, but we'll demo how that this can go a long way. And then of course, we'll record our audio through the headset so you get a feel of what it's like to be someone on the far end listening to audio through the noise canceling dual microphone setup. Before we get to all that, the shameless self plug part of the video, if you're not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so that you stay in the know. If you like the video, throw a thumbs up on it and then share it with all your friends and colleagues. Thank you for the support and let's get to the headset. Before we open the box, as you can see, it is the SDW5064 binaural deck system with USB dongle. In the box, we've got the SDW3BS, which is that base system. We've got the SDW60HS for the dual ear binaural headset. And then we've got the BTD800 USB dongle. Let's open the box, we'll flip this upward, simply lift the lid, and we've got right up top our headset in this plastic uh, styrofoam material. So we'll pull that on out. Lots of protective plastic wrapping throughout the headset. We'll get all that removed. And with our plastic wrapping removed, we will set this off to the side and finish our unboxing. Got quick start guides for both the headset and the base station. Got the base station itself tucked on into the cardboard molding here. It's got a protective plastic wrap. And then again, several areas to peel our plastic film off of. And on the side of the base station, we can see that USB dongle is already attached. We've got a bit more documentation down here, safety guides and tech specs. Reaching that in, we've got our USB-A to micro USB connection right there and our power cable for that base station. Again, with everything out of the box, putting aside our documentation, we've got the headset. We've got the base station with the Bluetooth dongle connected back here in that USB port. We've got our micro USB connection to go back to our laptop and we've got our power cord. Coming in for a closer look at that base station, we can see that this is where the charging ear will sit. This is a magnetic wireless charging port right here that the headset will clip into. We've got LED status indicators right here to let us know the battery levels of our headset as it charges. Down below, we've got various buttons that will signify uh, via LED indicators when something is activated or in use. For instance, a connection to a laptop, a connection to a mobile phone if we're using it, a USB or Bluetooth connection to another headset, and our mute on or off. Flipping the base station around to the back, we can see that we've got our power port right there, our micro USB to go back to the PC, and if we have a busy light that we want to attach, there is a port for that right there. That BTD800 Bluetooth dongle uh, can be removed. It is USB-A, goes into that USB-A port there. If you want to connect a Bluetooth device using this dongle, as long as it's supported, you can connect that second Bluetooth device to the base station, or you can unplug this and plug a USB wired headset into this USB port. Coming around to the bottom of the device, we've got our speaker right down here, kind of an open area, exposing it to the outside of the device. Four rubber grips on each corner to keep the device from sliding around on the desk. With this version of the base station, we don't have a few things back here that you'll find on the uh, more expanded version of the base station that can connect to like a desk phone. But we do have these dip switches all right here, and then we have a dip switch guide for controlling different settings, uh, long range, short range, and a number of other things. Now the SDW60 headset is deck security certified, also certified for Skype for Business. The SDW60 is again a dual ear headset, decked headset. It's got up to 10 hours of talk time on a full charge. A full charge takes 90 minutes on the base station, whereas a 50% charge can be achieved in only 30 minutes. There are two microphones built in to the boom microphone here. There's also a mute button built into the microphone. 
At the base of the ear that has the boom microphone on it, we've got a little switch at the bottom that will control volume up and down, as well as mute. There are several other functions that this button may be used for as well. I'll reference the user guide for a more complete picture of that. At the base of the boom mic, there is a busy light status indicator right there. And this EPOS branded button is actually a button for controlling your calls, answering, hang up, etc. The boom mic can be extended in both directions all the way. And to adjust the headset, you will simply pull, you'll hear a little clicking on each side. This can be pulled out to give you a wider head size. Or if you've got a smaller head size, you can bring that back in. The earpieces on the headset flex a little bit back and forth. They do not fold fully to the side, but they flex a little back and forth, giving you some adjustability there. The earpieces also tilt back and forth, making sure you've got the right angle to match your own ears. For comfort and optimal sound, there are these sound dampening foam ear pads on each ear, covering up the speaker. Looking at our quick guide for the headset, there is a lot more functionality built into the buttons on board the headset. I'm not going to dive into all of it. I just wanted to cover the fact that you can answer hang up calls, control media, control volume. But I would definitely recommend that if you were to purchase this device, you take a good look at all that can be done. There is a lot of functionality, customization, capability built into the various buttons on the headset. So doing a look and feel demo on a headset is always one that I feel a little funny about because I feel bad for the viewer that they have to try to envision the headset on themselves when they're staring at this mug. But it is what it is. One thing I'll point out, this is meant to be a all day wear light feel. It is indeed a light headset. There's not a lot of weight going on here uh, and you have a lot of comfort built into the ears. It can be used with the mic boom going left or right. As far as which side to wear it on, you can have the microphone on the left or right side. It's a matter of preference. Keep in mind that the uh, mute button is on the one side of the boom mic. So if you want that mute button to be on the bottom so you can push it with your thumb, then you'll want to wear it with the boom mic on your left. We'll do that for the purposes of this video. Uh, we're probably going to need a little bit of extra headroom up here, so I'll adjust it a bit. And with that, we'll go ahead and put it on. And a little bit more room, actually. Adjust it a couple more times. Now, it's an on-the-ear on, e on the ear headset. So we're, we're sitting right on the ear. Uh, it's, it's a nice, cozy, comfortable feel. Notice there was not padding built into the top part of the headband. However, with the device being light enough and the clamping being just right, that may not come into play. Obviously, I haven't worn it for hours and hours and hours, so I can't weigh in on that in this, here, in this moment right now. But I can say that it is a comfortable feel. I don't feel tight clamping, and I don't feel heaviness sitting at the top of the head. So there's that. When we extend the boom mic down, now I would have my mute button at the bottom here. This is what it looks like to wear the headset as you move around the office and talk on it. So just a quick demo of what the look and feel, as I interpret it, is of the SDW60 headset. Now, before first use, the instructions tell us to get a good charge for at least 20 minutes on the headset. So to do that, we're going to flip the base station around, we'll plug in our power, and we'll plug in the micro USB end, micro USB end of the USB cable into this PC portion right here. Really, we probably only need to charge, uh, plug in the power for charging it, but we're gonna get this connected to our laptop at the same time. Now, the other end, of the USB is going to go into our laptop. So we'll take that off to the side. And then the other end of the power is obviously going into the wall so that we get power to our base station. And once we plug in that base station, we see it come to life a little bit. We've got some LEDs starting to happen here. So we're gonna take our headset. And now on the inside of the headset, the side with the boom mic, you can see that we've got these little metal prongs here that will attach to the magnetic charging piece of our base station. We do not have that on the flip side. Easy to tell. So we'll take that and we'll set it right inside of that. We feel it clip into place. We see that we are blinking here. So it is connecting and we are starting to charge. You can see we've already got about a 50% charge on it. I'm gonna give it about 20 minutes or so, let it get a little bit more, and then we will 
begin to use it and demo it. Okay, we have plugged in the base station to the laptop on a USB-A port, and we can see all the different components are registered into EPOS Connect. We've got the base station on the left, headset in the middle, and that Bluetooth dongle. Every single one of them says they have an update, but the headset and the base station say they need updates for full support. So clicking on the updates overview over here, we're gonna go ahead and say install all updates, get everything up to where it needs to be, and then we will proceed with taking a look at our settings. A quick note on the EPOS Connect software, it is a free download out at their website. I strongly suggest that if you are using their gear, you go download that and use it to manage all the different kinds of customizations and settings available for your particular device. And with that, we can see every device has been updated. We're in a good thumbs up status. Going back to our home screen, we see all three devices up here. Again, check marks across the board. And we can click on any of these to go in and explore the settings for these devices. Now, if we go to our base station, we get a number of wireless settings in here, our radio range, we've got long, medium, short, call answering, we've got manual hook, open audio hook, audio hook, audio quality, better wide band, you've got best super wide band. Um, we're gonna leave it on better as the default just because we're gonna try to take this thing for a little lengthy walk and uh, take a look at that deck range. I don't wanna take up too much time going through all the possible settings because as you get the device, I want you to be able to explore it and take a look at all this yourself. But just really quickly on the audio settings, we've got audio limiter, USB auto audio. We've got a ringtone settings down here, ringtone and ringtone volume, HID commands, whether they're enabled or not, multiple headset conferencing, kind of a cool feature. Do we wanna be able to conference multiple headsets that's enabled, but we can disable it. We've got USB port capability. Is the USB port enabled or not? We could just completely disable the USB port on the side of the base station. Voice prompts for USB devices, enabled or disabled. You've got call and hold notification, call merging, music streaming indication, master reset to reset it all. So you've got all these settings that you can tweak and change. You can save settings if you make any changes. You can restore settings if you wanna restore everything you would just put on there. And as we go over to general settings, we can see here that we've got the default headset has our base station selected, default soft phone. I'm gonna say Microsoft Teams here because not many folks are using Skype for business anymore. Busy light is enabled. Uh, busy light integration with the soft phone. Well, that's what we're going to keep there so that our, our soft phone like Teams will uh, will be integrated with the busy light headset status sync, mute notification, mute notification interval, transfer call capabilities. Uh, then general settings, we have pause media capabilities is checked. And then the floating menu is enabled. If you made any changes, again, save your settings. Popping over to the SDW60, our headset, we've got motion sensor. So in other words, do we auto answer with motion? Yes, we do. For voice prompts, we'll enable them so that we get those voice prompts in ear. Boom arm placement, it is set to left. You can set it to right if you prefer the boom arm to be over on the right side. Side tone, you can control the amount of side tone there. Auto power off. We want to shut it off automatically after a certain period of time. If yes, how much time? It's got 12 hours as the max here. You can disable auto power off or set it to a less time if desired. Finally, coming over to the Bluetooth dongle, we're not using it for anything in this video, but should you want to use a Bluetooth dongle, you can enable pairing and you can clear your pairing list. And that does it for our options and settings and managing all these devices within the EPOS Connect software. And now for a brief demo of actually recording audio through the SDW60 headset. Uh, the audio you are hearing now is being recorded through the microphones on this mic. We're using OBS Studio and we've selected the base station as our, uh, our source for audio, which is of course our touch point for the decked connectivity. So we're recording through the headset right now. I'm going to turn to this side and you should see the busy light on the back of the boom mic because it's in use and we are using, we're recording through it right now. Now I'll point out that we've got the base station we are viewing as well. Uh, we're gonna demo a little bit of the integration while you're hearing again, my audio as recorded through the mic, that's your audio demo. If I push the mute button,
clearly the base hands the base uh, set reflects that we have muted on the headset. I can also push it down here. And now you do hear me. So mute two different places that you can control it from. The base station will show a couple other. If we're connected to a laptop, we're going to see this lit up here. If we're connected to a mobile device via Bluetooth, we will see that down there as well. One other area that you can mute the headset, the little button on the underside of the left ear when you've got the boom mic over here. If you press that in once, pressing it again will unmute you. Also, sliding this to the right or left controls your volume. So, and I just saw on my screen, you're not seeing it, but I saw on the screen the little volume up and down as I adjusted the volume by sliding that little slider back and forth. Again, keep in mind, if you're going to answer a call or hang up a call as it comes in or you're done with it, you would press this little button right here, and that would answer or hang up your call. But this is the audio demo, a uh, recording of me speaking into the microphone so you get a feel, a sense of what that feels like. And it also demos some of that mute integration, both on the headset as well as on the base station. Okay, a brief demo on our decked headset range. Keep in mind, this is not an ideal environment. This is a noise canceling microphone, but I got a slight breeze. We are outside, there's nature. It's not a nice, clean, clear office space with optimal audio. So just keep that in mind as far as what the audio sounds like. Refer back to the audio recording in the office for a true experience for audio mic sound. As far as decked range, I'm going to walk out back that way. Now with an unobstructed area, a nice clear line of sight, you can get up to 590 feet of range on this decked headset. Uh, we're going to probably get less because we're going out towards trees, but I'm going to walk quite a ways out there just so you can see this thing keeps on connecting in through that deck connection for a long ways. I'm a pretty good distance now, but you should still be hearing me. I'm starting to get back into the trees, but you should still be hearing me. Now I am way back here in the trees, but I bet you're still hearing me. And if I go much further, I might be in the forest pretty soon, but you're probably still hearing me. There you go, a little bit of that decked range. There it is, the EPOS SDW Impact 5064 deck system. Hope you found the video incredibly useful and informative. And if you did, I kindly ask that you throw a like on it, share it with all your friends and colleagues on social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, stay in the know. Thanks for tuning in today, and I hope we will see you back here for the next device overview video.